It is the most listened to radio talk show in the country. There's a reason for that. And that reason is it is hosted by me. Here is uh, here's Matt in Grand Rapids, Michigan. It's great that you waited, sir. I appreciate your patience. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing, Russ? Thanks for having me. You bet. Uh, yeah, I was calling because uh, you had a guy that called in earlier basically blaming you because he thinks you support Trump. And that kind of ignorance in people. Well, now, wait. He, he thinks insane. I support Trump because we live in the same place. Because you live in the same place, of all things. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It, 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 just, it, it goes to show the, the misconception, I believe, that people have of Trump. Um, believe it or not, I'm not even a Trump supporter. I'm a, I'm a Cruz supporter, but I would defend Trump in those regards. <laughs> if Trump's a nominee, will you vote for him? Oh, absolutely. I, I would. Because I think that, I mean, I think that people believe that Trump is a liberal in conservative clothing. But in reality, I think he is a conservative in liberal clothing. And that is what draws so many people towards him. Because of he, he resonates with people because of he, you know, just like the Democratic side, they point out the injustices to all these little groups of people. And Donald Trump points out the injustices to us, the entire middle class. You, you have a point. Let me, this reminds me of something. Uh, good job here, Matt. You just reminded me of something I saw last night. I received in the email a, I think it was a YouTube link, whatever, it was a video to a couple of guys who have an internet show, two guys that stand or sit behind microphones and act like it's the McLaughlin group. There's just two guys out there. I don't know who they are. They're, they're, they're just, I'm sure it's just a couple guys in a podcast or whatever it is. They came across, apparently Trump had a meeting with the Washington Post editorial board. And the video, the audio tape of this interview and a transcript of it was released. And the point that these two guys were trying to make was that Trump is a blithering idiot. That he is the most illiterate on policy person that's ever run for the office of president. He doesn't know anything. He's incompetent. He is embarrassingly uneducated on basic things that somebody running for president ought to know. And they give three examples from the Washington Post editorial board meeting that Trump had. And the first example they gave was, I think it was Fred Hyatt uh, speaking. He's one of the, he is the editorial editor, I think, at uh, the Washington Post. I think it was Hyatt. There were a bunch of, obviously, people in the meeting. Somebody asked Trump if he thinks that there is an institutional racist problem with policing in America. They didn't ask him about a specific incident or city or place. They asked him if he thought there was, and would he comment on community policing and whether or not it was racist, biased. I, I forget the exact wording of the question. It may The word racism might have not been in there, but the impression I got was, that these people wanted to know if Trump thinks the cops are corrupt. That was essentially the question. And Trump wouldn't go there. What Trump talked about was high unemployment in the black community, black youth unemployment, and he was terribly troubled by it, and overall African-American community unemployment. And he said it's a bad situation and it's got to change not nearly enough attention is being paid to it. And these two guys that were hosting this show, look at me, he's so, he's so stupid, he's so dumb, he didn't even know what the question was about. He didn't even maybe know that there's a problem with policing in America. He, well, he didn't even go there. What a blithering idiot. What a fool. I've never seen anything like it. Why, the question was, 
Are the cops corrupt or racist? And he he probably doesn't even know anybody. Th- and I watched this. And this was sent to me, by the way, by somebody who thought Trump probably looked bad in this. But I looked at this as a Trumpist would look at it. And I would think a Trumpist would see this as a trick question by the Washington Post that Trump cleverly didn't fall for. A Trumpist, a true Trump supporter, would see this as an attempt by the Washington Post editorial board to somehow entrap or ensnare Trump into saying something one way or the other about the cops so that they can then start some controversy. Either Trump says cops are not racist, which would be ideal, because the Washington Post thinks, like every leftist, that the cops are racist and they're putting people in jail, Hispanics and African Americans who don't deserve to be in jail. This is what the left thinks. But Trump didn't answer that. But he also didn't defend the cops. He talked about unemployment. These two guys hosting this little Internet show, whatever it was, just were beside themselves with Trump's ignorance. And I I watch this and I say, you know what? Um, He's answering the problem. He's basically saying... We've got a crime problem because there are too many people with too much time on their hands. We need people working. There are all kinds of root causes for misbehavior in kids, in adults, that criminal misbehavior. One of the root causes is too much time. And it was clear. He didn't say any of this that I'm saying. This is total interpretation. But it was clear that if you know how to listen to Trump. And then he, and, and, and this answer, by the way, oh, this really ticked these guys off. He, Trump, in answering the question about whether policing is racist or corrupt, started talking about fair trade and China and how we, where everybody's at a disadvantage because we're losing jobs. And I interpreted this as Trump sensing a red flag and going nowhere near it, not wanting to give the Washington Post editorial board anything other than he's stupid, ignorant, don't know what he's talking about. But his answer to the question was basically... Uh, in a lot of people's view, one of the solutions to the crime problem is get people back to work. And I, I don't know who really could argue with that. I mean, some people might. But if you if you were anti-Trump and you watch this, then you would conclude that Trump was evasive, didn't want to answer. I guess you might think he doesn't even know what he's being asked, but he's not stupid by any stretch of the imagination. Well, there were two other examples of this. And by the way, don't anybody go try to find this because I'm not going to air it. That's the point of this is not to call these guys out. And since I've already talked about it, look, this is just as good as hearing it. Trust me, that's, you know, explaining things. I happen to be pretty good at that. So you don't need to hear it. I'm telling you what it was. There were two other. It was a 54, 55 minute interview, and these two guys hosting the show cited three things that just embarrassed them. That, that Trump is, and these are guys looked at their late twenties, early thirties, but they just thought Trump was a total embarrassment, total fool, doesn't know anything, can and cannot answer these questions because he's not informed on it. He doesn't know, and I forget what the other two were, but they were along. Uh. NATO? No, I don't think it was NATO. It, 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 it might have been terrorism to Brussels. I forget. I Really, I've got it here. It's in my internet, in my, in my email inbox. Oh, I can go back and look at it again. But I, anyway, my, my point is that a Trump supporter watching this would not be convinced that Trump's an idiot. They would think Trump's brilliant for not falling into the trap set by the enemy, the Washington Post. And Trump started out by, by telling, look, you know what? Oh, that the seg was libel law. Well, just what the hell are you going to do about libel? How in the world? Could, and he didn't say what he was going to do. He started talking about how he's been mistreated, how a lot of people are lied about in the press and they can't do anything about it, and how it's got to stop. The press is ruining people. He said, you people have written things about me utterly false. I can't tell you how many times. It's terrible. You're terrible what you've done. He's telling them this. And I'm telling you, your Trumpist supporter, yeah, man, you tell them, you tell them. 
But the anti-Trumpist is going to look at this. What a blithering idiot. This guy didn't even know enough to answer these questions. So it would be a good Rorschach test. Anyway, I'm up against it on time. Got to take a break. Back after this. No. 